Australian Search and Rescue Canine is a volunteer organisation providing emergency services with canine and handler teams to help during search and rescue incidents. So Jeff, what kind of incidents do you get called out for? Well, we work with a lot of different areas. So mm -hmm. a lot of the emergency services would call us in response to a disaster such as a collapsed building following a, an earthquake or a terrorist event. Okay. And then through Vic Pol, we were then asked to deploy and we'd look for people that are trapped under that or underneath that rubble. Okay, why do they use you guys and not their own? Well, luckily for us, those type of events don't occur very often mm. in Australia, um, if at all. Uh, so by maintaining a volunteer capacity, it means that we're still able to maintain that capability just in case, because it could be life or death yes. if, in the case of a real event, if someone's mm. trapped and we can't find them. But we do it at a volunteer capacity, so it's at no expense to the Australian public. And how do people train to become part of the organisation? There's a few different components to the way we train. We have open days on regular periods so mm -hmm. that people can come down and see what we're about. Okay. Um, and that involves, I guess, testing the people to make sure that they're comfortable hidden in a confined space, buried under rubble so the dog oh, can find yes. them. <laughs> and then also an assessment of their dog to make sure that the dog's got the, the right capability to Good do nose. that. Yeah. And then the other part of that is as well, we have to integrate with emergency services. We need to make sure that if we do turn up on a disaster site, that we're not a liability to those services and that we're able to integrate with them. Some of your people have gone through the National Dog Trainers Federation course and you're actually a lecturer <laughs> there. So tell us a little bit about that and how you work with them. Yeah, we have. So we've got um, quite a few of our, our, our handlers have, have gone through the Dog Trainers course. And basically that course provides the guys with a really good base understanding yes. to apply that methodology to this type of environment. So we're, it's the same principles as training all of our other types of scenarios with dogs. It's just, in this instance, we're channeling it towards finding a missing person. What are some of the things that they, they do need to have, as I guess, as their little skill? So I guess for our dogs, we're looking at dogs that are really highly motivated, mm. um, whether that be for food or toy. They love to hunt. It is a fair bit of commitment though, isn't it? The guys here train every weekend and there's a pretty solid expectation that you will attend most of those exercises. Um, it does take a while to develop that skill set mm -hmm. and then to on go. So in order to pass the assessment and be deployed as operational, yes. the guys need to deploy with their dogs and find seven victims over four different searches. Okay. And there is a time limit on that. Right. On that, right? So it's an extensive requirement for the dogs to be able to maintain an ongoing search um, yes. and that's why we need that ongoing commitment to make okay. sure that we can can meet the standard. And here we're in Melbourne in your training grounds, what kind of exercises do they do here? So here we have a variety of exercises that we work on. So we have our control and agility scenario. This is what we use to teach the dogs how to negotiate the rubble pile, let mm -hmm. them know where their, their back feet are, yes. get them walking over ladders and, and through different environments. We also have a, an obedience component where mm -hmm. the dogs need to be able to heal off lead, do a stay out of sight for X amount of time. Um, again, around being confident that we can take them anywhere we need to. Yes. And then of course we have our search scenario, you can see some of the buildings the in the background, where we hide victims and we deploy the dogs to search. Um, and the great fun about that is the dogs act independently. Yes. The handler doesn't know where the person's hiding or even if there's someone there. When they find the person, they'll actually start barking to tell us that this is this is where the person is. Great, all righty. Well, if you're interested in finding a bit more, you live in Victoria, uh, visit the ASA Canine, ASA Canine ASA. website. And if you'd like to find out more about becoming a certified dog dog trainer and doing some of this scent detection work, visit the NDTF website. Thanks Jeff. Thank you.